All right, acetaminophen metabolism part one. We're gonna start off with our acetaminophen molecule on the left. Most important functional group is going to be this OH because the OH is what allows the sulfotransferase and the UGT to add their sulfate and their glucur glucuronic acid respectively. Okay, what that does is it increases the polarity of the molecule and gets it ready for excretion. Those two pathways, pathways one and two, uh, sulfotransferase and uh, UDP glucuronosyl transferase, those are your major metabolic pathways for acetaminophen. Choosing between the two, the sulfate pool is going to be limited, but the SULT enzyme, the SULT enzyme, has a lower KM. Whereas the glucuronic acid pool, you've got more of that, it's not so much limited, and the KM is going to be higher. What this means, um, under low concentrations, you're going to prefer to sulfate. And under high concentrations, you're going to prefer to add attached glucuronic acid. So deplete the sulfate pool. Once the sulfate pool is depleted, then you're going to start adding glucuronic acid. Now, notice that we had polar groups right here ready for excretion. There are bacteria that are present. So the effect of bacteria is that they have enzymes, um, they have glucuronidases, and they have sulfatases that can reverse this reaction. So basically, they're going to cut this off, cut this off, and then it's going to return to the parent acetaminophen compound. That's what can happen with bacteria. A lot of drugs, what they do, um, the dosing is designed to account for the action of bacteria. And when you go back to the par parent compound, uh, that's what we call enterohepatic recirculation. Okay, so let's say we had some really, really active bacteria and you couldn't metabolize things via the sulfotransferase or the UGT. The third pathway that we're going to look at, um, it's generally a minor pathway, but um, if you have a lot of acetaminophen and you can't do pathway one or two, you could shunt it over via CYP450. Okay, and via CYP450, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to convert your acetaminophen into this compound called an aminokinone. Okay, the amino quinone right here, um, there's a lot of electron pushing and everything that goes on, but uh, the most important structure or the structural feature of amino quinone is this area right here. Okay, this is what we call a Michael acceptor. You have a double bond conjugated with a double bond att attached to like a nitrogen or an oxygen. And what's going to happen here is we have a bunch of nucleophiles. Okay, you have a bunch of nucleophiles. And these things can all go in there and they can attack and attach to the amino quinone. With GSH, it's not so bad because GSH, uh, glutathione, this is going to be a nice protective thing that's going to stop the amino quinone from becoming toxic. However, if you have DNA or protein, which are also nucleophiles, and they attach here, um, like let's say our GSH isn't working very well, what can happen from there is DNA attaches or protein attaches. Um, the DNA, it's bad to attach because it's going to damage it, and that's our whole genetic blueprint. And then the protein, that's going to be bad because if that attaches, um, what's going to do is that usually leads to an immune reaction. Okay. And also, one last thing. Um, remember how I said bacteria increases the uh, concentration of the parent compound by reversing pathways 1 and 2? Let's say you were to take antibiotics. Okay. If you were to take antibiotics... Um, what's going to happen there with the antibiotics is you're going to decrease the um, effect of the enterohepatic recirculation. Okay, so let's say we had antibiotics. That's going to decrease this reverse reaction. And as a result, um, you're going to need a lot more um, acetaminophen in order to overdose and get toxic effects. Because if you stop the reversal of pathways 1 and 2, you can more efficiently excrete it, and therefore it's going to be more difficult for you to overdose on acetaminophen. All right, so there we have it. Um, these are the major three pathways. The pathway that we really want to discuss in future videos is going to be this amino quinone thing because it incorporates a lot more concepts like N hydroxylation and also glutathione attack versus uh, DNA and protein attack.